Okay, how's everybody doing today? You're watching Slot Car Mayhem. I'm John, and this will be the second episode in the playlist for Tasker. And if you remember last week, we kind of took a look at an overview of Tasker, and I gave you some examples of some simple tasks that you can incorporate, use right away. Today, we're going to go a little bit more in depth, and I'm going to go through some of the tasks that I have for capturing the information from the Smart Race screen and how we, we can begin to use that information to have it do other things. So that being said, if you haven't subscribed yet, please go ahead and hit that subscription and slam that notification button. We're going to have a lot of this coming up and uh, we want to keep moving forward and making sure that nobody misses anything. So that'll be good. So I'm going to get ready to share my screen over here and uh, we'll start digging through some of the actual coding that I'm using on the Vim 3. I've just transferred them to a, another device here. Make it a little easier for you to see what's going on. And we'll take a look and we'll see what we have. Okay, here we are back at our Tasker screen. And you can see we have the mic mute on, the mic mute off. We're inside our tasks. And uh, I've added a couple more that I've copied directly from the Vim 3 onto this unit here. It's a little easier to work on Tasker on a uh, standard phone or something like that versus the Smart Race screen itself. But it's all still the same. So I've got two new tasks here that I've copied in and I've got Race Capture and Race Capture Setup. And what I'm going to do is I am going to show you and walk you through each of these uh, tasks here and then I'll show you how to use some of it to actually input the information you need to make it do what you want very quickly. Uh, the first one I want to show you actually is the race capture setup. And the reason why I want to do that one first is that's actually the first step in the race capture routine. So let's open the race capture setup and let's see what we have. Now what this does is this basically sets up all the variables that we need and um, we'll put everything in the right condition when we're starting a new race. The reason why is there's certain things that Smart Race does in certain orders. Uh, for example, you never start a race in rain conditions or with a cloudy sky. That's what I'm forcing here. I'm making sure the conditions are what Smart Race wants them to be when we start a race. So let's take a look at some of these variables and I'll explain what they are. Uh, the first one here where we have variable clear, the read all variable, when we input the information on the Smart Race screen, it comes in as a local variable called AI text. Here, what I'm doing is uh, I'm clearing a variable called read all. If we notice the capitalization, that is a global variable, not a local variable. Well, in the race capture, I set the read all variable as a global to read the local variable, which is the AI text. So the read all is the information that's captured from the Smart Race screen. The LCA and the WCA uh, are for the activity codes generated from the lighting controller or the weather controller. And they report back and let me know the status of them. And if the status changes, I get an alert. The secondary controllers basically sums the LCA and the WCA variables together Again, giving me the status information of both of my secondary controllers. Rain condition, that is set to dry. Sky condition is set to clear. Prepare condition is set to zero. The wait loop time is set to 300, and that is in milliseconds. And here we've got the variable set. The secondary controllers equals WCA plus LCA. Again, that's my variable for the reporting back of the status of the weather controller and the lighting controller. And then I have a wait time of six seconds just to make sure everything's good and stable. Okay, we'll go ahead and we'll return. And now we're going to start looking at the race capture task. Now if we come here, the first thing we notice is the step number one is to perform the task of race capture setup, which is why I showed you that first. So the first thing we do is get all our variables set in a predetermined format. The very next step is to use auto input, the plugin, and we're going to do a query of the user interface, the UI query. And 
all we're going to do is just to make sure that we're reading the screen and we know what's going on. Once we read the screen, it's going to take all the text out of that and that's going to save it as a variable called AI text as a local variable. We're going to wait a quarter of a second, that's 250 milliseconds, just to make sure it captures everything and does what it needs to do. And remember I said how we set one variable to another. Here is where I'm setting the read all and I'm just setting it to the value that's contained within the AI text. That's it. We're going to move forward and the first thing we're going to come to is our cloudy trigger. And you see I had the label up here in orange right here and we've got that. So we're going to look at the cloudy trigger here and see what we have. The first thing we have is an if statement. If read all, which is everything from the smart race screen, matches, and here we have the text condition in this case, it's start to rain. If you're using the smart race and you're using the weather and it's in English, you're going to find out uh, the way it kind of pronounces things or says things might be a little odd, uh, not a big deal, perfectly understandable. But the trigger for this is when the voice act, the voice features on the smart race says it looks as if it's about to uh, start to rain very shortly. That's what it's picking up. We have an asterisk, start to rain, asterisk. And the asterisks, of course, are wild cards. So as long as any string of text within this read all contains the phrase start to rain, it doesn't matter what comes before, it doesn't matter what comes after. This is the text string it's looking for. And that's uh, what's going to set the condition to go ahead and tell it to generate the cloudy condition. And here we have, uh, we're going to perform the task sky cloudy if this condition here is met. Whenever you, you use an if statement, you have to follow it up with an end if. If you have multiple if statements, you have to have the same amount of end if statements when you're writing this stuff. Okay, here's the next one we have here. We have the rain trigger. And again, we can see it very simply. Uh, we've got our if statement. And the if statement's a little bit different on here because it's nested. So we have if read all matches anything started raining anything and rain condition matches dry and the reason why that's important if it's raining you don't want it to start raining again bottom line so when we do these changes from rain to dry we change this variable as well of the rain condition so that way it actually knows what state it's actually in and it won't duplicate its, itself trying to change states to something it's already in, if that makes any sense. And we, uh, if those conditions are met, we go ahead and we perform our task weather rain, which will set the variable rain condition to raining at that state. And we have our end if. Likewise, we have the same type of condition for uh, dry, Again, the same thing, read all is now dry, and rain condition is raining, it'll run the trigger. And I keep showing you these little labels on here in orange. Let's go back, take a look at them, like we have right here, where it'll say rain stop trigger on the left-hand side here in the orange. How we set that is very simple. If we just click the box that says label, and we can type in the label we want, uh, rain, stop. Sometimes this is very helpful if you're writing a more complex type of task to help keep things organized. So we do that. Now you can see our label now says rain stop. So very handy, very simple. Again, we're followed up with an if with an end if statement. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the end of race trigger. And end of race is very simple. If read all contains the word congratulations, again with the wild cards before and after, uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to perform a task clear. Actually, I'm not using this task anymore. I have it here in case I need to go back and do some troubleshooting. So I've disabled this part of the function. And how you enable and disable 
is you would just long click on it and you see how the whole thing is highlighted. Well, if we go to the upper right, we can see we have an enable and then we could disable again. And you see the little gray bar here on the uh, left of the task number. That means it's disabled and not active. But what we're going to do is we are going to perform a task called race end. And that's when everything will come back and turn back to full bright and it'll stop the rain if it's raining, all that kind of stuff. And here we have to uh, start the fast clock and uh, pretty much the same thing. And again, we've got a nested if statement. So if read all is status starting and read all also contains type race, we'll go ahead and generate this, uh, the authority to go ahead and run this particular task. And you notice here we've got a new command we haven't seen yet, auto remote. And this is going to send a two digit code to the specific device listed here, which is the uh, lighting, lighting controller. And it's going to send the message FC. The next one is to set the wait loop time. You remember we had it at 300 in the initial setting. Now we're changing it to 1000, which is one second. And we follow it with our end if. And then we also have the set sky clear when preparing. And this one here, again, we've got a nested. We're looking for the type race and the status prepare. If that's good, it's going to go to the next line. If the prepare condition happens to be zero, it will then run the task race prepare. That's what sets all the lighting green and everything. It sets everything up getting ready to start the race, followed up with an end if. Here I have a variable clear of read all. And if you notice the gray line, it's disabled. I only use that for troubleshooting purposes. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to wait. We'll go ahead and we see our wait line here. And basically we're setting our wait line to whatever it is in this value. So here we have it at 1000 milliseconds, which is one second. So we're going to wait 1000 milliseconds or one second. Then our next step here is to go to action item number two which is all the way back up here. And that's where we do our screen query again. So basically what's happening is we're taking a look at the screen and if any of these conditions are met, it's going to perform that task. And then it's going to continue till it gets to the end and it's going to loop right back up to the top again and it's going to repeat. So it'll keep doing this once a second, reading the screen information, looking to see if there's anything it needs to act upon. If there is, it'll execute that action and it'll continue. So actually very simple how it works and it's proven to be, to be quite reliable overall. Okay, now we're going to take a look at how do we implement some of this stuff. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new task. I'll just call it test two. So I know I can delete it. And the first thing we're going to want to do, uh, we're going to use the auto input plugin to do the capture for the smart race screen. So of course we're going to start a new task or a new action. And here we're not going to use the filter. We're going to scroll down until we get to plugin because auto input is a plugin for tasker. And here under our plugins, we have auto input and we'll select that. Now you see we have a bunch of different things we can do here. Actions, gestures, key guard, all this kind of stuff. We're going to scroll down until we get to UI query. Okay, here we got a bunch of stuff in here. What do we do with it, right? We don't know. So if we look at the configuration line, follow that over to the right. You're going to see a little edit icon. Let's go ahead and click that. Again, we've got a bunch of information here we don't know what to do with. So if we look where it says manual setup, right underneath it, it says variable setup. We're going to go ahead and we're going to click that. Now all of a sudden it's popping up a notification. That notification is going to disappear here in a minute. And basically what it's telling you that it created a notification and you need to navigate to the app that you want, then 
you'll go back to your notification and hit accept. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll just close that part of the icon for now. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to find our smart race in here if we can. There it is. We're going to launch our smart race and of course it's going to tell me you can't uh, remind me later. I'll just close all that down. We're just right there at the basic of the smart race screen. So now I'm going to come back to our notification and you see we have screen capture and then it says accept. Just hit the accept button. It's going to go back to your recent apps and it's going to ask you to go ahead and select tasker on that list. And here it pops up with the menu to select the fields that should create variables. I'm just going to hit OK. I just want to capture everything. And that's it. Now you notice our app package is populated and that's generally what we really need. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to back out of that. There, now we have our auto input UI query and this will continuously monitor and capture the information at a rate of about once a second what's going on with the smart race screen. Easy, easy, easy. Just make sure that you get yourself the auto input plugin. Works very well. Okay, so we'll leave this episode here and we'll move on to other things. So I basically took you through the tasks that I use to capture the software. I've shown you how to use auto input to quickly capture that information from the smart race screen and I've showed you how to create variables. So the next episode, I'm going to start talking about the auto remote and that's very powerful and how we send information from one device to another. So we'll take a look at that in the next episode and we'll try to keep this one short. So we'll leave this one here. Uh, again, please keep yourself safe, keep your family safe. Enjoy the rest of your week. Everybody just take care of yourselves. And as always, thank you for watching and we'll see you soon.